Hey, welcome to another Touch Center tutorial. My name is Torin, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do real time body tracking in Touch Designer 2022. So, we're actually doing all of the pose estimation in the browser. And what I've done here is I've modified Google's existing MoveNet example, and I've set it up to use WebSockets, which is a technology to be able to broadcast information over the internet really quickly. And here we're basically taking that pose estimation and piping it into Touch Designer in real time. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about this is that we don't actually have to run this just on our computer. We can also run it off of a phone. So I'm going to put this into our mobile resolution. And you can see here, now I'm running the same website on my phone and I'm able to do the body tracking and free up all of that computation that was running on my computer just onto my phone now. So ideally we'll have more resources to be able to do our visuals. But the other really interesting thing here is that we could also have this running on someone's browser on the other side of the world and we would be able to receive the body tracking info in real time. So it's not going to line up exactly with the image because it'll depend on where I'm putting my phone. Um, but you know, if I put it like close to where the camera is located here, I can kind of get the dots to line up. But it's way, way faster than what you would get with the Kinect. Um, before we dive into how this works under the hood and how to implement this, uh, I'm going to show you a couple examples of visuals that you can create using this technique. So a couple of things that I want to point out. The first thing, I'd highly recommend that you check out the tutorial that I made on WebSockets. And I'll put a link in the description or put some clickable thing up here. Um, in that, I'll show you how to use a website. You can make some nice looking UI and then be able to live control Touch Designer from within the browser and also be able to use Touch Designer and then control elements in the browser as well. Uh, I think it'll be really helpful to get a sense of how that underlying technology works. Um, and hopefully you can use it for some of the projects. So for the tutorial today, I'm not actually going to be building this component for body tracking from scratch, but I will be showing you how it works. And I'm going to put a link to this whole component in my Patreon. Um, that being said, I did open source the website and also the socket server. So I think with the combo of that plus the WebSocket tutorial, if you have like interme intermediate experience with Touch Designer, you should be able to recreate this from scratch. But if you want to save yourself some time implementing something like this, um, head on over to my Patreon and I'll put a link to that in the description or somewhere here. Um, that being said, let's dive into it. Welcome back. It is another day. Um, it's taken me that long to record this video. So if you download this component out of the box and you open up the no connect website, um, it will sync up automatically and it'll start running the body tracking. But the one problem is that if another person also connects to the website at the same time, you will start getting their body tracking data as well. So it's going to start kind of jumping between your body tracking and their body tracking. It's not that great. So the only thing that we need to do is just host your own WebSocket server. And that's actually a surprisingly simple process. So I boiled it down into just a couple steps that we need to do. Um, and then once that's up and running, you'll be able to just play around with this component and do what you like with it. So first thing you need to do is make sure you have a GitHub account. So go, to, go ahead and head over to github.com and make sure that you have a login for that. The other thing is make sure that you have a Heroku account. So go to heroku.com, make sure you have a login. Uh, and from there, all we're going to do is navigate to 
github.com and go to my profile, head on over to repositories, and then go to this socket server template. And I'm going to put a link to this in the description. So the only thing that you need to do is just click this button fork. That's it. Now you have a copy of this code for the socket server in your account. Then all we need to do is host this on Heroku. So we're going to go to Heroku. And once you log in, this is kind of the main dashboard. And what we'll do here is you're just going to click on this button called new, and you're going to make a new app. We're going to give it a name, our super sweet socket server. And don't use the same name because you can only have a single name. We're going to create the app. And then you're going to say connect to GitHub. This will prompt you to log in with your specific GitHub. And then here we can search for um, socket server. We're going to search for it. And there it is. So this will be, this will have your name here instead. We're going to hit connect. That's going to link this to our GitHub account. And there is a production branch here. You don't necessarily need to enable automatic deploys. You can if you want, but that means that if you push any changes to the code base into the production branch, it will just automatically update it on the website. Um, but in this case, all we need to do now is just click deploy branch. And that's it. We're going to wait for a second. And Heroku is going to spin up a new server for us. Now that it's finished deploying, you can click on view and we will be taken to our new socket server. Notice that it says hello world. That's really the functionality of the website. Other than that, we're just going to copy this URL. Don't copy the HTTPS colon slash slash. Copy just the name and then all the way through heroku.com. And you can go ahead and close out of this. What we're going to do is paste that into our component for the container. Um, so uh, in our touch designer project. So this is going to be, this is our component. This is our like no connect can component. And if the parameters aren't available by default, you can hit P on the keyboard. And notice that there's in this custom tab, it says WSS colon slash slash, and then the name of this Heroku of a Heroku server. We're going to swap this out. So we're going to paste ours in here. And I'm going to scroll back so you can see double check that it says WSS colon slash slash. And once that's there, we're going to leave the port number the same. It's going to be still 443. And you're going to hit pulse. So it's going to reset our um, it's going to reset our component and our WebSocket. There actually is a WebSocket server component inside this that's listening for those changes. So now what we need to do is make sure that we're sending our information from the no, no connect website using that WebSocket server. I have some UI here where you can connect to your WebSocket URL, but I found it's more helpful to just have a permanent URL that you can use. So one thing that I did is I added a query parameter to this website. So at the end of this, make sure that there's a slash. You're going to add a question mark. You can start to type WS in lowercase, all uppercase URL equals and then you'll type in WSS colon slash slash and the name of our server. So in this case, it's our super sweet socket server .com. Um, And the last thing that you need to do is you need to specify that the port that it's hosted on. And you can see over here that we're using port 443. And the way that we do that is we say colon and then you type in 443. So now if we load this, it will connect to the server. I'm going to specify my camera. It connected successfully. And we should be able to see the connect points. And my frame rate is tanked right now because I'm recording video, screenshot, and running the model. But I guarantee you'll be able to get very, very fast. Frame rates also if you're using your phone. Um, so one big thing to note is that you can take this URL and text it to yourself. And you can load this on your phone. 
And then the one thing here is that make sure to switch the resolution to mobile when you do that. I did set it up so that it works the best in landscape. So flip your phone sideways and then you'll get the right resolution. Um, some other things to note, there's this nifty little joint threshold. You can kind of see here that there's a score threshold that's in the model. And so that's how accurate it thinks the points are. And I added a similar functionality in here to be able to kind of uh, fade the connect joints in and out. Um, also, if you want to be able to have a slightly slower model, but with more accuracy, you can switch this instead of lightning to thunder. I haven't specifically set up multipose yet, but feel free if you want to, to go into the component and parse out that information. But let's go ahead and take a look at how you can customize this. I'm going to go ahead and go into the touch designer component now. And you'll see I've kind of, I've added some comments in the new touch designer project. Notice that here we have our normalized pose data. So by default, your positions are scaled to be the size of the resolution of the image. And what I did here is I kind of normalized those coordinates for you so that all of your body positions are scaled from zero to one. Hopefully that'll make it a lot easier. And you can actually see some of the data. So we get like the, you know, your nose X position, your nose Y position, uh, as well as all of your uh, limb information for like your shoulder, your elbow, all that good stuff. And one thing I wanted to show as an example down below here is like, how do we get the motion for something like, you know, your nose and then translate that into something that we could use for visuals. All I'm doing here is I'm selecting out the nose X and Y, and I'm using this slope. So this will basically calculate the, uh, well, we're, we're using the acceleration here. And I'm kind of capping it because the acceleration will give us negative and positive values. And then I'm adding together the X and Y channels. So that way we kind of get the average, we get the, we get the motion in both the X and the Y direction. And then I'm scaling it and adding a little bit of easing to it. And so then this value right here, you could use in your visuals, for example, if you wanted to be able to track the motion of someone's nose and then use that to add in like a smooth animation for um, their position. Um, up here, you can see that I'm pulling out all of the X and Y positions as well as the score for like how accurate the pose is. And I'm combining all those channels together to be able to instance with it. Um, feel free to use this data however you would like. Uh, you can see here in the geometry, I'm under the instancing page. I'm just pulling in the X and Y to translate a bunch of little circles around. You could do whatever you'd like. Uh, and then I'm also using just the video device in and uh, overlaying those together. If you do want to get more of a connect video type feel to it, um, if you're on a Windows device, you can also use this NVIDIA background cutout component, and that will remove the background for you in real time. It does take a fair amount of compute, but that can be a nice thing to kind of overlay with the points. Um, I also have a tutorial if you're on Mac or PC using a software called mm -hmm, and it I'll show you in there how you can get a green screen and or how you can create kind of a virtual green screen and then we'll be able to cut out the background so you could kind of combine both of those together. So one last thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, this component over here is actually used to connect to the WebSocket server. So there actually is a WebSocket DAT that's built into Touch Designer. Um, you can see here, this is where we're pulling the network address and the port. And then this is the callback that we get where we can write some Python code to pull in that information. Um, so when, when there's a new message, we can do whatever we like with it. In this case, this Python code is basically reading in the JSON data that's getting sent, and I'm translating it into a table here. And then from there, we're converting it into some chops that we can use for instancing. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that if your joint data ever stops updating, uh, I would recommend first double checking that Touch Designer is still in play mode. So this happens to me all the time. Uh, if it's paused, you can make sure that your numbers are updating, make sure you're in play mode. And then the other thing to test out is pulsing 
the component here, you can also hit one on the keyboard. That'll refresh the connection on the WebSocket. I actually did set it up so that when the playhead reaches the end here, it should automatically reconnect to the WebSocket server um, to try and prevent any uh, connection timeouts. And the other thing is go to the website and then make sure that the connection hasn't dropped here either. Um, so you can always refresh the web page here to make sure that the socket server is connected. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you found this helpful. I'm really excited to see what type of things that you'll create using this. If you did find it helpful, consider hitting the like button and subscribing, and feel free to check out the Patreon page as well. Cool. Thanks again. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.